Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. Back with you again. We're having our cup of coffee and our Bible readings uh, together. I hope you're having a great day, and I will uh, pray. start out our day with uh, prayer. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Father, for your love for us as we come together, as we come over your word, and was, as we come together in prayer. I pray you would bless and reconnect us as your children to each other and to you by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you would touch our community around us and that we might continue to be um, uh, visuals of what Jesus is like. Help us to be and to act out the life of Christ in full view of the people who are watching us, observing us. Let us be faithful to you and by grace surpass our inadequacies, overrule our limitations, and let us be like Christ before other people. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, so we're looking at um, Colossians chapter 1, and um, we're talking about, uh, we've, the last couple of days we've been talking about the dilemma that we find ourselves in, that God has said that, uh, Paul says that um, we have been alienated from God because of our evil behavior, and that's kind of cyclical, cyclical and it's a vicious cycle that, that goes from sinning to alienation to, from God to more sinning to more alienation, and just draws us further and further away. And um, so Paul uh, talks about uh, the answer to this being found in, in God um, reconciling us by Christ's physical body. And so I wanted to start um, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, um, by highlighting another point that kind of goes along with all of this that we've been saying. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 uh, says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding. And so he uses those three words, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, in, in, one, uh, in one sentence to talk about what he's praying for the Colossians and for us by extension. Uh, that he wants us to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And the question is, um, okay, you want us to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of what? And, and that's where we come back to these verses, uh, verses 21 and 22, where he talks about this dilemma. And he says the answer to the dilemma is that God has uh, broken through our cycle, this, this pattern that we could not break out of, uh, we can get we couldn't get out of it, so God reaches into it and He breaks this cycle for us, and He reconciles us uh, by Christ's physical body, uh, and he, he emphasizes Christ's physical body, and that's what I wanted to kind of bring out uh, this morning, that we are somehow somehow the answer to our problem, our biggest problem, is found in the in the physical body of Christ, and. Um, I think last week I, I talked about uh, death, burial, and resurrection, and, and I've been talking about death, burial, and resurrection for uh, a while now. Since basically since Easter, it's been a re reoccurring theme of, of these devotions um, because I, I think it is key, and I don't think it's talked about enough in in uh, church services, in Bible studies, and preaching, uh, it, because this is really truly the key to our relationship with with God, our, our reconciliation to God is through the Christ event, what he did, his death, burial, and resurrection. Um, in Colossians, um, it's, it's just really fascinating that Paul talks about us being, and he uses the words, in or with Christ. We are in Christ, we are with Christ, and he uses that, that phraseology 24 times in just uh, the few chapters of, of Colossians. There's only four chapters in the book of Colossians. Four chapters, he says, 24 times. He says, you are in Christ. You are with Christ. And so he, this is a recurring th theme that he really wants to get across to us, that we were in Christ. In Colossians 2.20, he says that we have been crucified with Christ. In Colossians 2.12, he tells us that we have been buried with Christ. In Colossians 2.13, he tells us that we have been raised with Christ. Um, sometime during the Easter season, we like to sing that song, and I, I don't, we didn't sing it this year round, but a lot of times a lot of, we will sing that song, Were You There? And the, the song, you know, Were you there when they crucified the Lord? Were you there when they crucified the Lord? And then they, 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 there's other verses. The other verses, Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when, they, when he rose up from the, the grave? And the answer, the theological answer from Colossians and from the rest of the New Testament 
to that question is, yes, we were. If we belong to Christ, if we have asked Jesus to come into our hearts, then the truth of the matter is we were there. We were there when he was crucified. We were there when he was buried. We were there when he was resurrected. And I will say it like this to you as plainly as I can plainly say it. If you're a Christian, you were crucified with Christ. If you're a Christian, you were buried with Christ. When he went into the grave, you went in there with him. When, If you're a Christian, when he was raised from the dead, you were raised from, from the dead. You were connected to Jesus and all of these things. Um, chapter 1, verses 27 and 28 uh, of Colossians. God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that he, we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. That's Colossians 1, 27 and 28. And the reason I read those verses to you is because there is a, there is a crossing of uh, the, these principles. First of all, in verse 27, Paul says, uh, you are, it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And then in verse 27, 28, he talks about um, being uh, uh, us being in Christ. So the first he says, Christ is in us. And then he says, we are in Christ. And I wanted to highlight that because basically, um, when you think about the verbiage of the New Testament and our relationship with God, um, once Colossians says, once we were alienated from God because of our evil behavior, but now we have been reconciled through Christ's physical body. And Paul's wording of that is, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And if you could kind of picture, we are kind of sandwiched from both sides. We are inside of Christ and Christ is inside of us. So Christ is all around us. We are saturated with Christ. Once we were alienated from God, now we are saturated with God. Once we were lost, now we are sandwiched by grace. And Paul, later on in the, in the book of Colossians, he talks about being clothed with Christ, like putting Christ on. And so it's this wonderful picture of us, of us being insulated uh, by Christ, that he covers us, that he is inside us, that he's outside of us, he's all around us, that Jesus saturated, saturates our whole lives. He is everything to the Christian. And so I guess I, I bring that up because I want to challenge you. Um, the reality, the theological reality is that Christ is everything to us. We need to, to start to walk day by day in that theological reality so that we become more and more um, transformed into the image of Christ. Uh, I said it once, I think, in a sermon here even at Chapel Hill that... Um, it's, it's, uh, you cannot put God into something, into a container, without radically um, changing the container. It just, it just, when God is inside of us, when we are inside of God, when God is just surrounds us, it's going to change us at our very, from our very core, to, from inside out, all of us, it'll all be changed. And that's what Jesus is talking to the Pharisees about when he says, um, he talks to the Pharisees that you guys are hypocrites. You, you look like you're like uh, all clean on the outside, but inside you're like uh, whitewashed tombs full of, of, of dead people. And so he said, he said you, you've got it on the outside, it looks really good, but on the inside there's something really wrong. And that's what Jesus has come to fix for us, that, it, that, it, that our religion that our relationship with God might not be something that is just false and on the is it's on the outside but not the inside, but it's, it's true um, all the way through us. Jesus is in us, and we are in Jesus, um, and that is our hope. The Bible says the hope of glory. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you for your love for us, Father. Thank you the grace that gives you've given to us in Jesus. Uh, help us to continue to meditate on, take hold fully of these truths that you've given to us, because I truly believe that they will have an impact in the way we live our lives from day to day. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a wonderful day. We will see each other soon.